Hello and welcome to our background effects tutorial. So we've had a couple of comments asking us to do a tutorial um, for the gradient backgrounds that we use in some of our videos. So today I'm going to be showing you a few ways to create a very clean um, gradient background that you'll be able to use um, behind some minimalistic designs or even some typography. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do, open up my Photoshop. Okay, and because there's two ways that I'm going to be showing you how to do this, first thing I'm going to do to keep this tidy is to create two new groups. So if we go down to our layer section, at the bottom of our layers, we'll see create a new group. Go ahead and click that. Then I'm going to click it again. Let's label these as well. So let's label this option one. And I'll label two. Option two. Okay. So when you actually open Photoshop, um, as standard, you'll usually get a white background. Um, sometimes you may get transparent if you have it as a, as a preset, um, but it's more than likely going to be set to a white background. We're going to use this background to create um, a, a, new, a new layer. We can't actually create the effect on the background itself because it's got the lock um, sign here. So what we're going to simply do is click on the background, um, background layer. We're going to drag it down um, to the new layer section. Okay. And when we release that, that will create a new layer for us. Just go ahead and drag that and drop it into your option one um, box um, group. Okay, so now we have our new layer selected. Um, we can actually start applying some effects onto this. So we want to go back down, head down to this um, tab here, which is um, labeled FX. Um, that, that cleverly stands for effects. Um, and that's going to add a, a new layer style. Okay, so we want to click that. Now it's giving us these um, these options. We want to create a gradient overlay. So go ahead and click gradient overlay. Right, now as you can see, um, the gradient overlay has given us a standard default setting of a black to white um, linear gradient, which is really cool. However, we want to create a radar gradient. So first things first, we want to go over to where it says style and it's got linear. We want to click the drop down and click radar um, and that's going to change it to a radar gradient for us. However, we need to change these colors around. Um, we want to um, we want to change it so that we have the black on the outside um, and the white on the inside. So just go ahead and click reverse. That's done that for us. And then we want to change the scale. So down at the bottom here, we've got the the word scale. We want to put that up to its maximum, which is 150. So just scroll that up like that. And now it's coming along. Now we want to click on the gradient um, uh, picker. And this is going to give us the ability to change the colors. Now, I'm only going to change the black color. I want to change this to a gray. So if we click on the black um, tab there, and then we click back on the color, this gives us the freedom to be able to change the color right here. Now, obviously, you can pick whatever color you like, um, but I'm going to write in a code here. Um, so I'm going to type in my code, which is um, A8, A6, A6. And that gives me a nice gray that I'm looking for. Um, and as you've probably seen on some of our some of our tutorials, this is um, pretty much exactly the same as some of our tutorial backgrounds that we've used. So go ahead and click OK once you're happy. And that's one way of doing it. Now, the good thing about using um, the effects um, tool is that we can um, actually downsize this. We can make it smaller. We can make it bigger. Um, and and the effect is not going to change at all. So the layer can be changed um, in size and, and this won't have any effect on the actual layer style. The other beauty, beautiful thing about this is that we can actually um, copy this layer style. So just like you would copy and paste um, a document or an email and you'll be able to paste it into another form of a document, we can do the same thing with the layer style. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. So first things first, I'm going to create a new layer. So if I go to, to my layer section and just click create new layer, you can see there there's no change that's actually happened on my actual um, document here. But if you look on the layer, you can see these little grids that show that my layer is actually transparent. There's nothing on that layer at all. I'm going to change that by um, clicking on my paint bucket and I'm going to just fill this, um, this layer with a white color. Okay, so now you can see that's back to how we kind of originally started. Now, because it's a layer, I can start changing um, and adding effects to this now. But what I'm going to do is, is actually copy the effect from the last background that we just created. So if I click back on the background that we had before, so that's that one that you can see there. Okay, so click on that layer, hold control down, and then click on that layer. 
And if we scroll down, we've got a couple of options here. We've got um, copy layer style, paste layer style, clear layer style. We want to copy this layer style. So go ahead and click copy layer style. Now we have that copied. Simply click back onto the new layer that we've just created. Hold control again and then click on that layer. Okay, and now we scroll back down. And as you can see, we don't have the option to copy or clear. We only have the option to paste this layer. So go ahead and paste that layer. And as you can see, we've got a, a duplicate of what we've just done. Now, the good thing about this is, is not only do we have the freedom to scale the, the, the image down or scale it up in size, we can also go ahead and change and edit this gradient. So if I just double click on where it says gradient overlay, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to change the color. So I can go over to, onto this section where it says gradient, click on the gradient. I'm going to change this gray here. Um, let's change it for a nice dark red. Um, the code I'm using for this dark red is 93. 0202 okay and you can see that's a really nice um, shade of red and you're gonna really see this pop now when I put this other shade of red which is gonna be a lighter shade of red which is FF 0000 go ahead and press OK OK and OK and OK okay that is looking really good so that's one way of creating um, the gradient overlay like like I said um, the, the the flexibility on that is really cool however this this next way that I'm going to show you allows you a few more fe flexibilities um, so let me just go ahead and show you how to do that so go ahead I'm um, over to your options two group um, and we want to create a new layer so go ahead and go over to your new layer section um, and create a new layer. Now the reason why we're creating a new layer on this one is because um, we're going to fill it with a, with a color. Now we're going to go ahead and pick the color. Um, the color that we're going to use is going to be a dark gray. Now the reason why we need to pick the color first is because this works differently to the gradient overlay. Um, this color that we actually pick is going to be the base of our color and then we're going to create the, the, um, the radar gradient on top of it. Um, now this can be changed at any time, but it's important just to know that this color is the color that we're going to be using um, for the background. So I'm going to click on my color um, selection and I'm going to click, um, I'm going to make this a gray color. So I'm going to use a dark gray, which is 86, 85, 85. Go ahead and press OK. And I'm going to fill this. So go back to your paint bucket and then click in the center. And that's filled my, um, my option two background with a nice dark gray color. Now, now that we have the background done, we need to um, create um, a, a nice round tool. Um, so I'm gonna go over to my lips tool, um, select my lips tool, just make sure that your color is set back to, to um, white. Um, so once we have the ellipse tool selected, um, that's right there. Okay, now I wanna make sure it's white. Okay, and now I wanna hold, um, I wanna hold shift. And this is make, making sure that we can get a nice rounded um, shape. Um, now holding shift is going is to make sure that this round shape is a perfect circle. So hold shift and then click um, on your um, layer and then just drag that out to about there. That's going to give us a nice white circle shape. Okay. So now what we want to do is center this shape. Now the quickest and easiest way to center this shape is to hold, um, hold command down and then click on your background layer which has got this lock on it. Making sure that you've still got your, your um, layer selected, click on the background whilst holding command. Okay, and then we will go over to our top section over here um, where it's got show transform, transform um, controls. We want to um, center this um, so we, we align it horizontally and then we press our button and then we want to also align vertically. So now that's perfectly in the center. Right. Now that we have that, what we want to do, um, we need to create, um, a, a, we want to convert this, sorry, into a smart object. Now the reason why we want to convert this into a smart object is because we're going to start adding some filters onto it. Now um, you may be thinking, okay, well I can add a filter to it whether it's got a smart object or not, and you'll be correct. However, because we're, adding, we're creating it um, as a smart object, um, we can create filters that we can later on customize or, or change or delete or add on top of it if needs be. Whereas if we just um, started adding um, filters to it, it would rasterize this image and it would kind of, um, it wouldn't give us the flexibility or the freedom to go back and change things. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to convert that into a smart object. So make sure you've got your layer selected, hold control down on your keypad, click on the layer, and then we want to go over to where it says convert to smart object. Go ahead and click that. And as you can see, that's converted that into a smart object there. 
Right, now we're ready to start adding some filters. So go over to your filters tab um, on the top toolbar, and then we wanna add a blur, um, and we're gonna go to blur and then Gaussian blur. Click that, and then we wanna make sure that that's up at um, 200 um, pixels. Now, it's important that you have this preview um, uh, button checked. If you don't, you're gonna just see your normal um, circle, and you're gonna make changes, and you're not gonna know what's going on um, because you can't see it. So it's important to have that preview, um, preview button selected, um, and then put that up to 200 pixels and press OK. Right, and it's it's really that simple. Now, as you can see, we have our nice um, gradient um, radar background. Now, the beauty about this is that now we have the basically they're two separate images. So now we have um, that smart object. We can pretty much move that to the left or to the right, um, and that will give us a nice little effect. So we can actually position this where we want. But watch this. If I move this up to the top right hand corner, uh oh, you can see there we've got this little. It's kind of like a little line that's where it's been cut off. Now. If this wasn't a smart object, this would be a problem. However, because it's a smart object, this is easily rectified. So all we need to do to sort this little problem out is we just go over to um, edit and transform it. Now, the free transform button, if you go to edit and then transform, free transform, beg your pardon, it's gonna come up with a message. Um, and the message basically says that, look, this is a smart filter that we've got here. Um, and it's gonna temporarily turn off um, some of the some of the um, filters that are on it, just so that we can edit it. And then once we've finished editing it, it's gonna put it all back for us. So if we press okay, as, as it did say, it's gonna take off those filters and here we can now edit it. Now it's in this position, we can even make it smaller or make it bigger if we want to. I don't want to change that at this point. I actually want to keep it the same size it is. So because I'm happy with that, I'm going to press enter. And that's reapplied the filters back onto it um, and, and basically given us an, a nice finish at the bottom. So you can see the bottoms no longer being cut off. Um, and this can be positioned any way you like and you just repeat that process over and over again until you're happy. Um, so that's basically how you, you create the gradient, gradient um, radar um, gradient that way, um, which gives you a lot more flexibility. Um, so I, I hope you've um, liked that tutorial. I hope that's um, given you um, uh, some, some new stuff to kind of use within your designs. Um, don't forget to like, um, comment and subscribe. Um, and we'd love to hear um, how this simple technique has helped you. Um, or simply feel free to share this video with anyone you'd feel would, that would benefit from seeing this. Um, so thanks again for watching guys. Um, do look out for our next background effects tutorial where we'll be looking at how to create a grunge, uh, grunge effect background. See you then.